Okay, thank you, Rob. Well, it's a real pleasure to be here uh, with you guys in this EFL Talks. And the title of my presentation today is Greening the EFL Classroom. Before I start, I just want to make clear that I'm not an environmental expert. I'm just a teacher who is concerned with environmental issues. I actually want to make a greener place, a greener world for, for future generations, right? So why should we worry about this? Okay, why should we worry about environmental issues? Uh, due to fast progress in science, technology, and well, consequently industrialization, our natural resources have suffered damage, okay? But now the need for these um, natural resources has increased with the growing population of the world. Okay? So now we're starting to perceive the negative consequences of global warming, uh, ozone depletion, pollution, okay? All that in our daily lives. So if the whole the whole world is seeing the, these negative consequences, right? So most of the world's dangers have been caused by us, the human race, and it's our responsibility to resolve them before passing them to future generations, right? So um, as educators, we have an ethical and personal responsibility to teach our students about environmental issues and also to foster the ability to make independent and responsible decisions regarding the environment, right? So all this is sustained by different efforts. Uh, Gursowitz states that one of the ways to help people increase their awareness is via education. So we're the ones, okay, we educators are the ones to raise this awareness towards our natural environment. Kevin Sama states that EFL teaching should not only be limited to the improvement of learners' language proficiency, but also to enable them to develop critical thinking strategies that can be useful in environmental sustainability. So I believe that we as EFL teachers, the our goal is not only to teach our students about grammar, about pronunciation, linguistics, but also to teach them, um, to, to provide them those skills, okay, to prevent, okay, to help, okay, to make a greener place, okay, a greener world, right? So it's not only about grammar teaching. Then Hoshel, Boldachan, Stoller indicate that the incorporation of environmental topics into the language classroom promotes content learning, language learning, and personal responsibility inside and outside the classroom. Okay, so this definitely makes learning more meaningful. Now, leading to the theoretical framework, okay, with um, content-based instruction. Okay, so we know that content-based instruction is the integration of content learning with language teaching, okay? So you're mixing, okay, both language and content, okay? So what you see here in the image, and it has been shown, okay, by different researchers that content-based learning, or content-based instruction increases our students' confidence and motivation. Okay. So students feel more motivated okay, when both content and language learning are integrated. So the benefits of content-based instruction. First, it lends itself to integrate the skills instruction. So you can basically have four language skills in one activity. Okay. Uh, you could have students first watching a very short video about any environmental issue, let's say about um, recycling, then you ask them to read an article in the same topic and then to provide their opinion, okay, what they think about, what they understood, what they can contribute, okay, what can they do in their community regarding recycling, for example. Uh, the second benefit is it provides opportunities for extended input, meaningful output, and feedback. Okay, as I said before, so students are more committed. Okay, there's something extra, there's something new. 
oh, recycling, oh, about reducing, how can I reduce waste in my area? Right? So that's more information and they feel more committed. Definitely, it nurtures critical thinking skills. They need to look for solutions. They need to analyze the situation. Okay, so that's a very good benefit of content-based instruction. Also, it allows learners to develop expertise on interesting topics. Okay, so those are things that, would, uh, that are affecting us. They're definitely interested. Those are not vain. It, there's no vanity here. Those are things that are definitely are affecting us. And if we don't take actions right now, right now it's going to be uh, really bad in the future. And it facilitates the learning of thematically organized materials. Okay, comprising all the information provided before that everything follows uh, uh, an organization. Okay, so it facilitates the learn of this uh, organized materials. Now, in the field of environmental education, okay, this has its origins in two United Nations uh, meetings set in the mid 70s. Okay, and the two important documents that emerged from those uh, meetings. The first one was in 1975. 75, the Blue Braille Grid Charter was a result of the International Workshop on Environmental Education held in Belgrade, okay, former Yugoslavia. And then in 1977, delegates to the Intergovernmental Conference on Environmental Education in Tbilisi, Georgia, built on the Belgrade Foundation in adopting the Tbilisi Declaration. So all this, okay, all this environmental concern, okay, has its origins back in the 1970s, okay, when the United Nations, okay, started, okay, to care for the environment. And then they had those two, two different events and they, they arranged, okay, to help them. And to, these two important documents. Now, after this, the two events were held. The United Nations nations declared the or set the objectives of environmental education. The first one, okay, which is awareness. Okay, so with the the awareness, what we're trying to do is to help communities, to help societies acquire an awareness, a sensitivity towards the environment and the problems related to the environment, okay? So first, it's to get their attention, okay, to make them aware of what's going on, of all the problems that are, um, are happening at the moment in our natural environment. Then the second objective is knowledge, okay? Which is to help individuals, social groups, okay, acquire, okay, a basic understanding of what is required to create and maintain a sustainable environment. So they become aware of the situation and then they get the understanding of what we need to do okay, to create and maintain this sustainable environment. The third objective, attitude. Okay, so the purpose here is to help individuals, groups, societies acquire a set of values, feelings of concern, motivation to actively participate in protection of the environment. Okay, so I become aware, I've got the understanding, and now I've got that feeling of concern. I've got the motivation to actively participate in protection of the environment. After that, we've got skills, which refers to assist people, assist individuals to acquire the skills to identify first, prevent, and then solve environmental problems. Then we have the evolution, which is all the individuals to help all these individuals to evaluate environmental measures, environmental programs, okay, that most of the time are set by government entities. So it's what we're doing, is it okay? Okay, do we need to change anything? Do we need to uh, adapt a few things? So all those things are important, okay? Then we have the participation, which is to provide individuals, groups, societies, with the opportunity to, uh, to be actively involved at all levels, okay, 
of environmental protection. So with all this, how do we include environmental topics in our EFL classes? Now, nowadays with the internet, okay, there's lots of material, lots. We have the, uh, different uh, journals, different articles, different sites where you can uh, find articles that we can use in our classes. Also, we have the, um, these videos that I really like from Animal Planet, okay, which is uh, um, by Animal Save the Planet. And the, the, um, these are funny stories where um, animals provide tips on how to create this eco-friendly environment. And then, well, sounds are lots of sounds that we can use in our classrooms, lots of sounds. Um, there's a famous one by Jack Johnson, the three R's, there are so many sounds that we can use in our classroom for this. Also, we have uh, uh, these activities, natural pastures, okay? Uh, this is an idea that was said by Professor Luisa Cristina, uh, which is a for who is a former Vin Diesel president. And the idea is that students collect seeds, sticks, okay, um, dead flowers from the ground, and they present, okay, an art piece on a poster and on the reflections towards the environment. And this is really magnificent activity. Students, I mean, are very creative on this. There's also the recycling activity where um, students uh, become aware of how they can uh, reduce waste disposal, okay, on recycling. And, well, creating different objects, the activities, okay, with uh, uh, creating objects, making use of plastic and, well, cans. Well, I think my time is up. I need to rush. Okay. Sorry for taking longer. There's a lot of information. <laughs> but thank you very much, Rob, for this opportunity. Okay. And, well, go green. Save the environment. Okay. Save our